Women are so much better to each other. Best example, group chats. If you have good news to share, like if a woman gets promoted and she goes in the group chat like, hey girlies, got that promotion. And all of her friends are like, yes mama, we knew you'd get it. Drinks this afternoon, we love you. If my friend came to group chat and was like, fellas, I got promoted. Every single guy in the group chat in unison would be like, where, the dick sucking factory? <laughs> This next guy is his 80s regular. Just start clapping right now. Come on out, get excited for Mr. Joe. Hey! Great stuff, man. Good to be here. I appreciate you guys being here. There's only a couple weeks left in the year. It's not that long. It's crazy. I, uh, I've been taking a lot of stock on the past year, thinking about the highs and the lows. And this might be the high point, but I definitely know what the low point was. I was, I was watching television with my girlfriend and Dwayne The Rock Johnson appeared on the screen. And she was like, oh my God, when I lived in LA, I used to date his body double. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Don't fucking tell me that, you know? She was like, no, 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 I'm sorry. It wasn't his body double, it was his bodyguard. <laughs> oh, that's only so much worse. <laughs> You know, he's, he's, he doesn't look like the biggest, strongest guy in Hollywood. He just made the biggest, strongest guy in Hollywood feel safe and protected. You know? <laughs> I don't have an equivalent of that. My girlfriend's a lot prettier than me because I'm funny and that's how that works. <laughs> so when we compare exes, she wins every time, you know? She's just like, oh my God, I used to date The Rock's bodyguard. I'm just like, uh, one time I fingered a girl who looks like Flo from the Progressive commercial. <laughs> We both had our brushes with fame, babe, you know? <laughs> My girlfriend and I live together, which is nice, but uh, the apartment we moved into, it's, it's, I can't afford it. Uh, it's too nice, but I'm bad at communicating, so she has no idea. <laughs> she's, she's like, why'd you cry while signing the lease? Just, like, just a big day, <laughs> just, really, just emotional. I can't afford it because, you know, I do this, and, uh, but even before I did this, I worked in sales, and I would get fired a lot. <laughs> First of all, because they get all mad when you don't sell anything. That's, that's a real pet peeve of theirs. <laughs> but the other thing that would get me in trouble is this thing called Slack. Sure, yeah. For those of you who work in restaurants, Slack is like AOL Instant Messenger, but just for people who work at your company. So you can message any coworker directly, but they also have these group threads where when you post in it, everyone who works at your company gets a little notification all at the same time. So hypothetically, let's say this happened at a company named LinkedIn, because that's where I was working when this happened. And the whole company Slack thread where, uh, there's 2,000 people who work at this company, so the all employee Slack thread was for emergencies only. It only got posted in three times. The first time was a guy from IT going, hey everyone, welcome to Slack. And then the second time was a lady from HR going, hey everyone, due to rising case numbers, please take your laptops home with you until we figure out this COVID thing. And then the third time was me. And just a little context, a little background. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, there was a gentleman, he was the state treasurer for the state of Pennsylvania, his name was Bud Dwyer. And Bud got caught up in a bribery scandal where he not only had to resign the office, but he was going to jail, he was in a lot of trouble. So he called a press conference to announce his resignation and at this press conference on live TV, Bud Dwyer pulled out a gun and shot himself. Which means there's a video on the internet of Bud Dwyer pulling out a gun and blowing his brains out. So I posted that video for all 2,000 LinkedIn employees. It was just like, Mondays, am I right? <laughs> Okay, you guys way cooler than HR. Like, was, I've been fired from other jobs in the exit interviews like, hey, you know, we appreciated your efforts here. It obviously wasn't a good fit, but we wish you the best of luck. And then LinkedIn, the exit interview was just like, hey man, what the fuck? <laughs> it was Thursday, what are you doing? <laughs> Speaking of killing yourself, I went to a dry wedding recently. <laughs> Boo. So bad. <laughs> was, I'll never forget getting the invite. You know, you get the wedding invite, you open the envelope, you pull it out, and on the bottom it just says, this will be a dry wedding. And it was the first time in my life I felt like I totally understood what my uncle went through when he got drafted to serve in Vietnam. <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck 
it got me. <laughs> Usually when I get invited to a wedding, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be expensive. This was the first time I was like, baby, we need to go to Canada. <laughs> we need to flee. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I took a lot of special ed classes growing up. I don't know how to transition. I took a lot of special ed classes <laughs> growing up. The first special ed class I ever took was a math class. They took our whole grade and they broke us up into three groups. And I swear to God, these were the names of the classes. It was high math, medium math, and low math. That was the name of my math class. To give you an idea of the curriculum, at one point, high math was learning algebra. Medium math was learning pre-algebra. And me and my friends in low math were counting beans. That's how I learned math. Look at me now. <laughs> I felt so bad for our teacher, you know? The teacher for high math was like, hey guys, be sure to bring in your TI-83 calculators. Teacher for low math was like, guys, they gotta be dry beans. <laughs> These bushes, honey, barbecue, butter, baked beans are making a fucking mess, you guys. I'll never forget one day I was, I was adding two beans plus four beans to get six beans. This was our midterm. And I was in the lab crunching some numbers when uh, our teacher was like, hey guys, uh, it's been brought to our attention that calling this low math is mean and hurtful. So we're changing the names. High math is now level one math. Medium math is now level two math. And you guys are in level three math. And we were like, that's incredible. Three beans is way more than one bean. So. We did the math, this is better. This is a better class. So the whole school flipped on its, like all the, the special ed kids were suddenly bullying everyone else. <laughs> and we got pretty cocky, we were like, yeah, we're going Mach 3, Code 3. And then one day everyone started calling us level three tarts. And <laughs> here's the thing, 2023, not a cool word to say. 2004, the teachers thought it was funny. Like, Put that on a shirt. <laughs> I took special ed classes in high school too, because I'm consistent. And with junior high, it was like, okay, we're gonna break you guys up into groups. So it was just pre-designated, like you'd be in the special ed math class. But with high school, at the beginning of the year, the special ed room is completely empty. And then throughout the year, they assemble an elite team. They come to you one at a time, like, hey, we noticed your talents. We're gonna need you in this way smaller room. It's a lot like the X-Men, actually. <laughs> Except in the X-Men, the teacher's in the wheelchair. All right. <laughs> my favorite thing that ever happened in my special ed class was one time they took us on a field trip. And with other field trips, I'm sure you all remember, it was like, hey, in two months, we're going to a museum. But the special ed field trip, they just walked in one morning like, hey, you're going on a field trip right now. <laughs> Everyone get on the bus. It's the bus you're picturing. <laughs> And we were like, where are you taking, you know that question kids ask, where are you taking us? And they were like, I grew up just north of the city and they were like, yeah, we're gonna take a train downtown and then we're gonna take another train back. That was the whole pitch. And you guys are like, wow, that's a pretty underwhelming field trip. But to a room full of autistic teenage boys, we were like, did you say fucking trains? We're all aboard, okay? If you don't get the joke, autistic kids love trains. It's a huge part of our culture. And here's how much autistic kids like trains. My friend David, who's very wealthy now, his life rocks, you're allowed to laugh at this story. Uh, when they said, hey, we're taking a train downtown and another train back, David from the back of the classroom just went, the next train leaves at 11.17. <laughs> Just a metric schedule on deck, way to go. That's why he's a millionaire now. So we went on the field trip and like, we've all heard the phrase tragedy plus time equals comedy. I don't have any jokes about the field trip because it was just the best day of my life. Kids were taking pictures with conductors like they played for the Bulls. You know? So the next day I come back to school and I'm walking up to my friends who don't take special ed classes. We call them muggles. And <laughs> I walk up to a table full of muggles and I'm like, hey, what's up? How was your biology quiz? Ride any choo-choos? <laughs> I rode these many, you know? <laughs> so I was making fun of all those kids, but then I found out that while me and the fellows were riding the train, 
my high school hosted a college fair. <laughs> so our impromptu field trip was clearly just someone in the administration being like, we gotta get the special kids out of the building. Put them on a train, they'll lose their minds. <laughs> But no, my favorite thing about that day was my friend Jim, he was also in my special ed class. So David, millionaire now, Jim, uh, one time he has to go to the bathroom and the you know, teacher was like, I don't know, can you? And so he just pissed his pants. <laughs> and uh, I didn't hear from Jim for years and then I swear to God, uh, one day he stormed the Capitol building. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know how else to end that story. <laughs> oh, that's the best. I was talking about weddings. I, uh, I officiate a lot of weddings. I've officiated seven weddings, which sucks. You know? No, I've never been the best man. That's the speech I want to give, you know? The wedding officiant, I'm just like, on behalf of the bride and groom, we want to thank you all for being here. And then at the reception, the maid of honor is just staring at her phone like, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Jennifer and I met Jessica. It's the worst speech in the world. Every time I'm in the back, like, why are you clapping? She's bombing. This is awful. <laughs> Efficient speech, boring. Maid of honor speech, boring. And then they just unleash the drunkest guy in the building. Every best man speech is like, hey, what's up? Brian's gay. Brian's gay. <laughs> Guys are just terrible friends. Women are so much better to each other. Best example, group chats. Okay? If you have good news to share, like if a, if a woman gets promoted and she goes in the group chat like, hey girlies, got that promotion. All of her friends are like, yes mama, we knew you'd get it. Drinks this afternoon, we love you. If my friend came in a group chat and was like, fellas, I got promoted. Every single guy in the group chat in unison would be like, where, at the dick sucking factory? Like, are you now the manager of the dick sucking factory? I knew you had it in you, dude. My friend Jake, he posted in the group chat, I'm in a group chat with a bunch of my best friends since like third grade. We haven't said a kind word to each other in 17 years. <laughs> Jake came in the group chat and he was like, fellas, big news, Nicole is pregnant. I'm gonna be a dad. First response was, Jake, brother, that is incredible. At what age will you tell your kid about the time you came in your own pants at your bar mitzvah? <laughs> That's a true story, you guys. I'm about to get out of here, but before I go, I really want all of you to know that in the fall of 2004, Jacob Goldstein of Deerfield, Illinois, just busted all over himself while slow dancing with his crush at his bar mitzvah. So Jake has repeatedly asked me to stop using his real name when I tell him to And I can't. Uh, but the main reason he wants me to stop is he's a real estate agent here in Chicago. <laughs> so out of fairness to Jake, if any of you are looking for an affordable condo in River North, you should reach out to Jake Goldstein at Keller Williams Properties. <laughs> and he'll take care of you. I've been Joe Ames. Thank you. Bye. One more time for Joe. And Aaron.